Hello, I'm Mackerel Phones, apparently. Along with RPGs, the adventure game is often considered the best genre for telling stories in video games. Adventure games come with different interface styles, point-and-click, text-based, first-person, menu-based, and various others. Boundaries can blur, but the adventure game is distinguished from other genres through an emphasis on some combination of puzzle solving, dialogue, and environmental exploration to the exclusion or near exclusion of combat elements. And of all styles of adventure game, the format most associated with the term adventure game, at least in the West, is the point and click adventure game beginning on Apple computers in 1984 with Enchanted Scepters and the better-remembered Deja Vu the next year, reaching broader audiences when LucasArts started fleshing out the genre with comedic adventures in the late 80s. In these games, of course, the player interacts with the environment by pointing and clicking with the mouse cursor. When I consider the point-and-click classics, King's Quest, Maniac Mansion, Monkey Island, Leisure Suit Larry, Myst, etc., it becomes clear that, although many were pioneering pieces of work with some interesting elements, most of them don't seem to understand what people actually want from good stories. Character development, themes, complexity, as often as not any interesting narrative elements whatsoever. That said, even if point-and-click games are no longer the big style, the contemporary adventure game scene offers many far richer stories. And the 90s and early 2000s, of course, saw many more experimental and complex adventure games, too. However, I wondered if stories could ever genuinely benefit from being told as point-and-click adventures. One of my all-time favorite video games is Fran Bow. This point-and-click adventure features a gripping story with memorable characters and themes of trauma and survival, wrapped up in interesting artwork, fairy tale themes, and puzzles. Not to mention lovable characters like Fran and Itward, or the gory horrors of the Kamalas. But ultimately, what does the story gain from its format? How are the themes or characters advanced through the magic chemistry puzzle? I'm definitely not playing Fran Bo for the tic-tac-toe or finding the safe combination. The story in this case might not be drastically worse for its form, but it certainly isn't improved. Why is Fran Bo a point-and-click adventure instead of, say, a comic? A comic would retain the strong narrative, themes, dialogue, and artwork. It seems that most point-and-click adventures are held back as a consequence of being point-and-click adventures. The interactivity is not meaningful and pins the story down. Although The Neverhood is an engaging work of art, People don't remember it for the sliding tile puzzle or the flashing symbol puzzle, but for the claymation, the minimalist style, the humor, the music, most of the puzzles seem like afterthoughts shoehorned in to fill out an adventure game required feature checklist. The Neverhood is unique for using its first puzzle as a clever setup for its last, but generally, the point-and-click adventure employs puzzles either as awkward, distracting obstacles or as convoluted gags. Developers seem to have started figuring this out, with the modern first-person exploration genre that got its big start with the Chinese Room's 2008 classic, Dear Esther. These games generally eschew any traditional challenge, allowing the player to simply poke around an environment and maybe interact with characters as a story unfolds. Starting in Japan, visual novels and sound no Starting in Japan, visual novels and sound novels took the adventure game down another alternate route. Specifics vary, but the visual novel usually strips away all but the odd decision every few minutes, or hours, and sometimes that too. Like first-person exploration games, visual novels are debatably, not strictly, games anymore. The term video game may no longer exclusively describe media that are games. And that's fine. In 2007, Akihiro Hino and Level 5's Professor Layton series introduced another approach to the adventure game. The puzzles, usually completely unrelated to the story, 
pause the narrative to sweep the player into essentially another dimension where they finish a brain teaser before returning to the characters and setting. The extreme division between puzzle and story highlights the complete artificiality of the adventure game's marriage of puzzles and storytelling. But in these evolutions away from the point-and-click formula, have we lost anything valuable? What's going on? Oh, nothing. Doopy 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 doo. Pah! <laughs> the first point and click adventure I've played whose gameplay impressed me as adding depth was Edna and Harvey The Breakout, a LucasArts style comedy released in 2008. I prefer the original German title, Edna Brichtaus. Good and blunt. Daedalic probably only changed it for branding so that audiences could more easily identify the much more violent and twisted Harvey's New Eyes as a sequel. I really love this game. I remember it moved me more than the Hemingway novel I was reading at the time. In Edna Brichtaus, the player guides a young woman named Edna Conrad. She awakens in a padded cell with nothing but a gown and her stuffed rabbit Harvey. She has few memories, but knows two things. She's not crazy, and needs to get out of here. She can be sure about that, because her stuffed rabbit Harvey tells her so. He also tells her to break stuff. Edna Brichtaus began life as a university project of Daedalic co-founder Jan Müller Michaelis. Sorry for probably mispronouncing that. As a consequence, the animation is extremely limited, to the point that it's occasionally unclear what is supposed to be happening. But it's a labor of love. What it lacks in animation, Edna Brichtaus compensates for with an incredible amount of fully voiced dialogue. Almost every combination of command and item, item and item, item and character, command and environment, and item and environment results in a unique line. There are literally hours of dialogue completely unnecessary for beating the game. As in many point-and-click adventures, the player will sometimes end up uncertainly trying to combine items in their inventory. But instead of a tedious slog, the hilarious writing makes the process a joy. A genre flaw becomes an asset. Oh, genie in the lamp, grant me one wish. I'm listening. Prevent the player from searching all items for hidden jokes. Your wish would normally be my command, but the designers already asked the opposite. I spent a huge portion of my time playing, not trying to advance at all, but seeing if Edna would drink ketchup or what happens when you combine cornflakes in a coat hanger, or what Beeman thinks of potholders. Mmm, mustard flavored. In Edna Brichtaus, the puzzles do not feel like obstacles artificially grafted to the story. Edna and Harvey bumbling with weird junk through strings of weird dialogue is the story. If the player chooses, Edna can also vandalize an enormous amount of the environment. This involves the player in a way that a movie could not. We aren't having fun watching Edna cause mayhem. We are causing the mayhem with her. That said, I wish we could cause even more chaos, like the other characters get into mischief when Edna unlocks all the gates. Several inventory items are also completely useless for moving towards the ending. Instead, they become running gags in themselves, such as the old comic book that, when used on other items, prompts Edna to describe the adventures of Captain Useless. The irrationality of the character's actions and logic is also acknowledged and played with. Like many point-and-click heroes, Edna is a kleptomaniac who constantly steals seemingly useless garbage. But in the story, she actually is a kleptomaniac, and says so herself. I might be a klepto, but stealing someone's coffee machine is pure barbarism. And she also literally steals garbage. This one is as soaked and filthy as the last one, and I bet it's just as useless too. Normally the bizarre logic used in so many adventure game puzzles highlights how arbitrary and artificial the characters and plotting are, also how horrible the puzzle design is. But Edna is schizophrenic. Unusual leaps of logic or chats with inanimate objects follow naturally from her character. In Edna Brichtaus, the insane asylum setting justifies the irrationality. 
As the plot progresses, it becomes clear that the owner of the asylum, Dr. Marcel, is a cruel man with no interest in helping his patients, and has some connection to the death of Edna's father that's driven him to spend a decade trying to erase her memory. Although the game definitely broadcasts the twist too early, this plot is approached with absolute sincerity. This earnest heart is an essential grounding to the comedic adventure, lending it greater humor and pathos than a purely wacky or purely dramatic story could have. The emotional payoff makes Edna Brisht Aus superior to Harvey's new eyes despite the inferior production values. Laughter is all the heartier when you know disaster is around the corner. And the thousands of lines of dialogue reveal more about Edna to the player. Her banter with Harvey is actually Edna talking alone. As Harvey himself states, he is only a projection of her subconscious. Through the references she makes, the extremely creative ideas she invents on the fly, and her interactions with Harvey, we learn a lot about Edna's interests and personality. Her talks with Harvey in particular allow for some interesting complexity. Mm. Edna? Edna? Mm? The kid was a klutz. I know. Mm. He was a jerk. I... I know. I couldn't stand him. An idiot! A moron! A pimpled ulcer! A bag of pus! Dumb as a bag of nails! Cry baby! Butthead! Goof! Brain dead mother friggin' vomit munching horse fornicator! Edna! <laughs> I miss him. I know. For example, the abstract art in the lobby. Edna thinks the painting depicts a little girl in the belly of a whale, while Harvey says it's Dr. Marcel's head on a stake. At heart, Edna is a child in over her head, but also with violent tendencies and hatred for this man who's trapped her. Also interesting is that when Edna talks to inanimate objects, Harvey usually does their voices. This highlights the manner in which Edna instinctually, unconsciously invents voices and personalities for the objects around her. Edna Brishtaus transforms the exploration of the environment and inventory into exploration of its protagonist. At least, a lot of the time. This comes to a head after Edna and her friends actually escape from Dr. Marcel's asylum veering into much darker territory to explore the consequences of Edna's actions, her irrational violent outbursts, and her childish inability to understand the world. Edna's supportive friend Aluman, for example, is genuinely harming himself through his belief that he can live off cosmic energy. Because of Edna, the last we see of him, Aluman totters on the edge of a cliff, and believing he has left his human body, loses his ability to speak. And that's before the blood starts getting spilled. Everything's quiet out there. We're home at last, Harvey. Let's find your room. Then we'll have truly made it all the way. By the final area, the remains of Edna's childhood home, the comedy is dropped almost completely. As Edna, nearly naked, creeps through the ruins, she reflects on her lost childhood. Her commentary on the environment displays her delusions, guilt, and violent urges. Pinch me. Oh, it's not a bad dream after all. Oh, Edna, everything will be just fine. Are you looking at me? Do you want to fight? Do you remember this table, Harvey? This is where we sat, solved jigsaw puzzles, and played Spanish Inquisition with Alfred. I wonder if his toenails ever grew back. Are you trying to tell me something, Edna? Your fault. Your fault. Your fault. Ah, no! Stop that! We realize that Edna's idealized childhood was really cruel and lonely. Her whole journey has been to regain happiness she cannot reach, and never had to begin with. Pointing and clicking through the final few hours, I literally trembled. It packed a punch because, gradually, as an organic part of the adventure game formula, I had come to know Edna so well. I realized then that a point-and-click adventure CAN actually enhance a story. At least this one. A comic could not hold attention and convey meaning through hours of wacky rambling about ashtrays, pens, chair legs, phones. But this genre can.
I don't mean to oversell the complexity of Edna Brishtaus. The story is simple, puzzles occasionally obtuse, the revelation telegraphed, the cast mostly underutilized silly caricatures. It definitely aims to provoke laughter before and beyond thought or empathy. The ending, when Edna must choose between Harvey and Dr. Marcel, presents a harmful false dichotomy between complete enslavement or chaos. But Muller Michaelis evidently realized this, since in Harvey's new eyes, the best ending comes from the rejection of a similar false dilemma. And ultimately, if a point-and-click adventure story only makes sense because the characters are all insane, then maybe the genre lost popularity for a good reason. If I wanted to be extremely pretentious, I could say something about how the escape from the asylum reveals that the whole outside world is also insane, or describe Edna's journey in terms of its portrayal of mental illness, but the game doesn't ask to be read that way. To me, Edna Brishtaus revealed what is appealing about point-and-click adventures, at least potentially, the unique connection the player forms to the environment and characters who, stationary through most of the game, are practically part of it. In the words of my buddy Skello, working on external puzzles and other environmental mechanics builds a certain character for the world itself. But instead of a world for the sake of some jokes, or for the sake of adventure game routine, or for the sake of a weird world, Edna Brishtaus gave me a world of exploring Edna Conrad. But admittedly, exploring a world without the grind of combat is the draw of first-person exploration games too. But still, first-person exploration games often feature passing through an environment, whereas point-and-click adventures confront the player with puzzles and force them to engage with the environment and characters in a totally different way. The plan still seems to be alive. Maybe not all hope is lost yet.